Hello and welcome back to the Four Tech Make You Loco channel. Today we have a little quick tip that's gonna help you save some time, money, and a whole lot of frustration. Trust me. Now this applies to the supercharged versions of the F-150, so think the Lightning and the Harley Davidson edition here, you can see here. Uh, and then this should even apply to the Mustang Cobra back in the mid 90s that was also supercharged from the factory. Now the supercharger is pretty basic. They simply bolted it onto the existing engines down below. So you can see everything looks pretty basic on here. I got 542 valve and then they strapped on a supercharger, okay? The problem comes in when you're trying to do basic stuff on here like get inside to do timing chains and tensioners that are failed on here and you run across something like this. You'll probably, this will probably be the most frustrating part of the job trying to get inside the engine for anything. So right here's your regular crankshaft dampener pulley. No big deal, bolts on, presses on like usual. And this right here though is your dampener pulley, your crankshaft pulley for running the belt drive for the supercharger, okay? So this one is, is different in that it actually simply screws into the crankshaft dampener, but it's a left-hand thread. So you have to realize that first and foremost, the left-hand thread. So you turn it to the left to tighten it, and you turn it to the right to loosen it. Now it takes a standard 14 millimeter Allen socket on there to turn it, okay? The problem is it's torqued to 75 foot-pounds. Shouldn't be a bad breaker bar and four foot bar on there, brake torque, and the engine will hold it for you. Not so, the compression in the engine, even the belt drive on here, it will not hold it so you brake torque on here. It'll just keep spinning and spinning and spinning. Impacts, they do nothing, nothing at all. So the way Ford has you doing this is they want you to come underneath the truck here. I'll try to get underneath here with you. And uh, they want you to remove the starter and then put in a locking, it's like a locking teeth design that bolts in place of it so it holds and it you know, splines into the teeth on the flywheel and it holds the engine crankshaft from moving so you can brake torque on that, okay? Problem with it is that that tool is a little hard to find. So what I devised after finding some other people having this issue and they simply put a bolt in here and offset box and as you see here, I found that as you go around, it simply loosened the nut on the torque converter and it didn't really work that well. Especially for this one that's really tight on here. I had to break torque with a four foot breaker bar on there just to loosen it. So what I did to make sure the crankshaft didn't move, I'll try to focus better here for you, is I did the same thing, a double box end on there, offset onto the torque converter nuts, 14 millimeter, and then I brought it around until it touches the starter right here, the solenoid on the starter. So let me try to get you adjusted on here. What I'm gonna do, since it's all in place and ready to go, is I'm going to turn to the right, like we're trying to loosen it up here, okay? So we're turning to the right, and it's gonna bring it around and it's gonna sit right in this pocket right here. Watch. So get in there and you can see it's trying to move forward, forward. Well, it's in that pocket right there, so it, it can't move. So it locks it into place perfectly and it's like a straight shot over to the torque converter stud right here. So it can't move, right there. It's locked into place, can't move. Then you can come back up top here with your, your breaker bar and you can break it free. I'll show you how that looks. All right, now with the crankshaft flywheel locked into place, cannot move anymore, we can simply turn to the right and break torque on that hub down there. Now, yes, this one, it's got 39,000 miles on it. It's not rusted down there, but believe me, it's enough. That big hub on there, I needed this huge breaker bar set up on here just to do it. But it worked perfectly. I pull, pull, pulled, protected the fender, and eventually it popped. You can see it down below there, turning off of there. Now once you break torque on it, you can simply just 
unscrew it by hand. Now the other thing to realize on here, I'm gonna get over here and show you, is you need to remove that bolt. Uh, there's a nut right here, and then there's a double nut over here. And then after that, once you break torque on it, get this sucker out of the way. Out of the way like that. Keep going on the right, see that? It'll come right out. And this bracket and the pulley will come off together. But that's the way you do it for breaking torque on there. Uh, so you can get that thing off there without damaging it. It's like a three, $400 pulley and you don't want to damage it getting it off of there. That's the way to do it without special tool. Hope this helped. I'll see you guys next time.